Hi guys, this is your auntie from home, Auntie Stacy. So how's my bookworms been? I'm sure you've been reading and having lots and lots of fun. Okay, well this week I'm going to be reading a book by Enid Blyton. It's called You're a Nuisance, Mr. Metal. I'm sure we all know some of those people, right? But you aren't. So let's get on with it. So remember to like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy! You're a nuisance, Mr. Meadow. One day, Mr. Meadow took a little walk around the village. It was a lovely sunny day and he had on his new suit and felt rather proud of himself. I hope everyone notices my new suit, he thought. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Stump. What a lovely day. Oh, hello, Mrs. Wally. I hope I see you well. Ah, and here is dear Miss Scurry. How are you today? Nobody bothered to stop and talk to Medal or to admire his new suit. He was very disappointed. He walked on and came to Mrs. Puff's dear little cottage. Roses grew all over it. And in her garden were fruit trees of many kinds. Ha! Ah, plums. Metal saw them hanging purple and juicy on the trees. He saw Mrs. Puff at the front door doing something to her roses. He decided to go and be polite to her. Then she might offer him a basket of plums. So in at the front gate he went. He took off his fine new hat and bowed. Good morning, Mrs. Puff. What a lovely day. Oh, it's you, Medal, said Mrs. Puff, not sounding very pleased. How's your Aunt Jemima? She told me what a trial you are at times, meddling and muddling. That wasn't very nice of her, said Medal, offended. But she's often very difficult to please, very. Mrs. Puff stood on her tippy toes to try and reach the roses spray that had got loose. There now, she said, I knew I wouldn't be able to reach it. Pray let me, said Medal at once. In fact, if I can do anything for you, dear Mrs. Puff, I will. Anything. I'm always willing to help my aunt's friend. I don't think I want your help. Thank you, Medal, said Mrs. Puff hastily. She knew too well what a nuisance Mr. Medal could be when he tried to help. I'll get my husband to fetch the ladder and tie up that spray for me. When he comes in, he's busy just now. She went into the house and shut the door. Brother, thought Medal, she didn't offer me any plums. And I don't quite like to knock on the door and ask her for some. Well, I must be on my way, I suppose. What a pity she didn't notice my new suit. He was just walking down the path to the gate when he caught sight of a ladder in the garden. It was leaning against a plum tree. Mr. Garden, it was leaning against a plum tree. Mr. Meadow stopped and looked at it. Suppose he fetched it. 
put it against the front porch and neatly tied up that rose spray for Mrs. Puff. And a few others he could see were loose. Wouldn't she tell him to go and pick himself some nice plums for being so kind? Yes, surely she would. Medal went to fetch the ladder. It wasn't very heavy, so he put it over his shoulder and took it to the porch. He set it up and climbed it. He took some string from his pocket and began to tie up the rose spray, humming a little tune and hoping that Mrs. Puff would hear it. He tied up quite a lot of sprays, but Mrs. Puff didn't come out. Medal was getting tired of standing on the ladder, tying up every spray within reach. He was tired of the roses too. They had far too many thorns and already he had torn his new suit in three places. Then a loud voice shouted from somewhere, Hey! I want to get down! Hey! Medal was surprised. Who wanted to get down and why? He couldn't see anyone about. The voice yelled again, I'm coming down! I've got enough now! Hey! I say I want to get down! Get down then, whoever you are, and wherever you are, shouted Medal. Nobody's stopping you, are they? The front door opened and Mrs. Puff appeared. Medal? The loud voice yelled again from somewhere, Hey! Is that you, dear? I, I tell you, I want to get down. Did you take the ladder away? Well, bring it back! Good gracious! That's Mr. Puff up the big plum tree, said Mrs. Puff. Meadow, did you take the ladder away? How dare you! Uh, well, I didn't know he was up the plum tree, said Medal. I just took the ladder for the roses. Bring back my ladder, shouted Mr. Puff. And Medal got down the ladder in such a hurry that he caught his foot in one of the rungs and fell to the ground. Bump! He got up and dusted himself. Take the ladder to Mr. Puff, said Mrs. Puff crossly. Really, meddle? You must. You always meddle in things that don't concern you. Now, I'll have to untie all these sprays. Meddle ran to the big plum tree with the ladder. He set it up against the tree. Sorry, Mr. Puff, he called. I just... Oh, so it was you, cried Mr. Puff, and an angry red face appeared through the leaves. I might have guessed, and dear me, he threw a handful of ripe plums at poor Medal. They burst all over his beautiful new suit. Medal fled. Mr. Puff looked so very angry that he was quite sure he would get a whole lot more plums in half a second. He ran down the road and turned the corner. He almost bumped into his Aunt Jemima. Now, now, look where you're going, she said. My goodness me, Medal, look at your clothes, torn and dusty and stained with purple juice. 
How can you walk about like that? Why don't you go and buy yourself a really nice new suit? I'm ashamed of you. And away she walked with her nose in the air. Poor Meadow. In trouble again. It, if only he didn't meddle in other people's business. He'd be a lot better off, wouldn't he? Poor Mr. Meddle. Okay, bookworms, now that we have finished our story, remember we always do three questions. Number one, who is the author of the story? Two, who did Mr. Meadow want to help? And three, what did Mr. Meadow really want? Why he decided to help? So, answer those questions in the comment section. And also remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, guys. And look, I'm wearing my bookworms cap. Enjoy!